Great. Let's bring in House Judiciary Member Andy Biggs. He, of course, was at the hearing. So, Congressman, what did we get out of this hearing? Well, if you, if you thought we were going to get something productive, uh, pointing towards an answer to some of these issues, uh, I, I hate to disabuse you of that notion, but what we got out is, is we, we could see that there was additional rancor and, and, and uh, animus actually between committee members uh, toward members of the panel. I mean, so when you want to talk about regulating hate speech and you see what's going on from toward panelists, you say, well, may, maybe it is difficult for Facebook and Google because, uh, you know, we, we, we tre treasure this idea of First Amendment speech and sometimes it's going to be offensive, sometimes it's going to be hard. But nobody supports advocacy for violence against uh, one individual over another. In fact, we regulate that uh, today in criminal codes. Uh, Congressman, it's Carol Roth. I'm a big fan of free speech as well. And yeah. let's be honest, these platforms already have tools. They have uh, buttons where you can mute conversations, you can block people. You don't have to engage with people that you don't want to hear from truly. So can't there just be a rule that aligns with what you just said? If it's direct call for violence, if it's an indirect something that can harm people like the, the shouting fire in a crowded theater that aligns with free speech, then don't do it. And otherwise, speech is speech and it's good. Well, that's kind of the way I view it because the, the speech that we regulate as fire in a theater, threatening, intimidating, uh, uh, inciting to riot, uh, those types of things, even libel and slander for Pete's sakes. But the reality is uh, you've got this massive forum and uh, people want to regulate it in ways that I think are not uh, contemplated by uh, the long history of American uh, respect for free speech, including, let, let, I mean, let's face it. For, uh, the First Amendment was not designed to protect people who give uh, speeches that are popular. It was designed to protect people who had in offensive speech, quite frankly, because we want everybody to be able to say what's on their mind. Congressman, it's Kevin Kelly here, and uh, my takeaway from today's hearing is that this actually just helped limit the liabilities of the of these big tech companies because now they can actually take a step back. He's like, hey, we're working with Congress. We're trying to combat hate speech, and this helps give them a refuge from that. I mean, you've got the state's attorney generals coming after him. What do you, what do you make of that argument? No, I think you're right. I think that that uh, the state attorney generals are trying to, to get at him, but what, what I really think they're trying to do is they're trying to limit liability and not just limit liability, but they want to limit their public relations disasters that they have when they don't regulate speech. And, and yet, on the other hand, people want to be able to have that kind of communication. So they're in there trying to uh, pitch something, they're trying to walk a thin line, but the biggest thing they want to do is protect their franchise and uh, they want to keep from having any, li any liabilities. So, uh, but it, the, it was a big zero of a hearing, quite frankly, because uh, nobody was willing to move an inch. And, you know, when you see basic hatred on display in some of the speech that was actually going back and forth, you say, well, okay, I understand why Facebook and Google has trouble regulating it, and they probably shouldn't be regulating it unless it's going to lead to violence. Congressman, it's Robert Wolf. How are you? Um, Great. At the beginning, we showed uh, Candace Owens, and a lot of the media has been around the situation where Ted Lieu played the comments uh, that Candace Owens made uh, with respect to Hitler as someone of the Jewish faith. I thought it was very interesting that the Republican Party would bring her on as their um, almost a spokesperson. Um, so I'm surprised. I, I, could you embellish a little why that was... Uh, the direction that the Republican Party decided to go? Well, I think that the problem with Mr. Liu is that he was trying to have a gotcha moment and then he was overwhelmed by the defense by, by uh, Ms. Owens because she said, you know, I'm talking about uh, nationalism and what that's about. I'm talking about how odious and evil Adolf Hitler was. But he cherry picked a 30 second soundbite and when it was all said and done, he had his hat in his hand because. Candace Owens effectively uh, base, uh, disabused everybody that that was what she intended. When you take it out of context, sure, you can make anybody look bad. But uh, we also had Mr. Klein there from the Zionist organization. I thought he did an ex uh, exemplary job as well. Uh, I, I appreciated all the witnesses being there today. Uh, I just didn't appreciate the animus that actually came from members of the committee.
Congressman, it's John Layfield here. You gave this hearing a zero today. I'm not sure I'd give it that high of a number. It was an absolute, <laughs> it was an absolute dog and pony show. But yeah. I want to, sir, what, what was hoped to be accomplished here? I mean, does government really want to get in the business of regulating free speech? What, what do you hope happens with these social media companies? Well, for me, it gets back to my respect for free speech. And, and if, we, if we have somebody that is, uh, if they're publishing, uh, and, and it incites hatred or violence, then I think they've got some liability. And that's, I think that, that's, that's where you draw the line. It's just kind of like we regulate free speech now, uh, whether it's th threatening, intimidating. We, you can even have assault, uh, assaultive conduct uh, through speech. But it requires a certain culpable mental state. It requires uh, access to, that, uh, uh, to, to the ability to act. And I just don't see that that's where we got to today. And I, I just don't know what, they, what my colleagues on the other side were trying to do, except try to make Republicans and conservatives look like we like hate speech. That's, that's all the I can congressman, <laughs> congressman, another thing that's happening today is the president speaking against our immigration policies. Right. Here's what he said. We have the worst laws of any country anywhere in the world, whether it's catch and release or or any one of them. I mean, I could name, I could sit here and name them, but if you did, if you got rid of catch and release, chain migration, uh, visa lottery, uh, you have to fix the asylum. The Democrats in Congress, what they're doing and the obstruction, they don't want to fix it. And we have to fix it. They want open borders. They want to have millions of people pouring into our country. Yeah. So, Congressman, you lead the Border Security Caucus. What do you make of these comments and the recent shakeup at the DHS? Well, uh, I, I agree with the comments. I think the president's right. I think he's, he's seeing the same numbers I see. Uh, he went down to the border last week. I go down to the border fairly frequently. I'll be down again next week. And, and I talked to, I just got another email today, and I will tell you, it is a crisis on the border. And uh, just think of it this way. Um, over a million, uh, over 100,000 people came in to this country uh, that we caught. They tell me that you probably get another uh, 200,000 that we didn't catch last month. This is a, a, a bad precedent. The asylum law is uh, terrible. We saw that we can't even detain him uh, according to the injunction by a lower court judge out of the Ninth Circuit yesterday. Uh, Mexico's not, even though they said they would, they're not detaining him. It is a crisis on the border. I don't think the president is, is necessarily trying to clean house there at the DHS. What I, what I think he's trying to do is, is send a message that we're going to be tougher. And we have to be tougher because uh, we're being overrun. And, you know, I just talked to, I just got an email today uh, from somebody else who is basically getting their, their ranch trespassed every day. Every yeah. day they have trespassers on there. Congressman, uh, you have put forth a suggestion of, of stopping remittances from the United States to Mexico. I'm just wondering, how do you freeze those remittances, and, and what effect do you think that would have, not just on our relationship with Mexico, but on the, the whole financial system? Well, I think you, you can use the financial services laws to, to freeze them through the executive branch without Congress. And I'm not asking for a long-term freeze because I think what would happen is since we get, send more than $30 billion to Mexico and the Northern Triangle countries on an annual basis, it wouldn't take more than a few days, quite frankly, for Mexico to say, yes, they're serious. For Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, they all say, they're serious, we're going to participate. And that would allow us to do things like uh, leverage uh, participation in an international protocol for Mexico to to take those asylums and hold them in Mexico, which would obviate the California law. So, so this would be a powerful tool. Um, and, you know, I'm trying to get as little disruption economically as possible. But when you look at uh, the estimate of 75 to $100 billion a year impact by uh, illegal uh, immigration into this country, uh, maybe we have to accept that we're going to have to have some short-term pain. Congressman Andy Biggs, always a pleasure to see you, Congressman. Thank you for coming in. Appreciate it.